everyone, this is Jennifer, and I'm a developer relations engineer at Definity, a major contributor to the internet computer blockchain. Today, we're going to go over the starter project, which uses an internet computer canister smart contract to verify the ownership of Ethereum NFTs. Let's get started. To start, what is the internet computer? The internet computer, or ICP, is a blockchain that allows Web3 services to run 100% on-chain, providing the only platform where developers can build and users can fully enjoy decentralized applications. So what is the ICEF starter project? It uses IC Canister smart contracts to verify the ownership of NFTs on Ethereum mainnet, Sefolia, and Gurley testnets. How does it do this? It calls the Ethereum JSON RPC directly using the HTTPS outcalls feature within IC Canister Smart Contracts. The HTTPS outcalls feature enables HTTPS requests to be called directly in an internet computer canister. Therefore, there isn't a need for oracles. In our upcoming Ethereum integration, the JSON RPC will be replaced with an on-chain Ethereum API built directly on the Ethereum computer. The internet computer will run Ethereum nodes along ICP replicas or nodes. This is the same approach to our Bitcoin integration, which is currently live. To learn more about our Ethereum integration, check out our Ethereum integration page, which is listed in the description. For Ethereum projects, they can now build their applications completely on-chain. Again, no need for oracles. Using this example, you can now verify ownership of NFTs, unlocking various token gating and NFT verification use cases. For IC projects, you can now integrate Ethereum easily. Let's take a look at how this is built. The front end was built using React via TypeScript. The backend canister smart contract was programmed in Makomotoko, a safe and simple programming language for the internet computer. It also used MOPS, an on-chain community package manager for Motoko, and Modev a live reload development server for, for Motoko. It's important to note that you don't need to use Motoko to write smart contracts on the internet computer. You can use any language that compiles to WASM, including Python, Rust, and TypeScript. For the Ethereum integration, we programmed it in Rust, and we use Ethers Core, a popular Rust library for working with Ethereum data structures. Now, Let's create a new project. In the repository, you'll find a section on how to create a new project. Make sure that you have the latest node and DFX installed. DFX is a command line execution environment for creating, deploying, and managing dApps on the internet computer. First, you will need to set up the Rust canister development with the following command. Next, you need to create a new empty project directory. First, I'm gonna go into my documents directory. Then I'll create a new folder. And I'll go into that folder. Now, I can run the following commands. First, I'll download the starter project. Then, I'll run DFX in the background. Then, I'll install the packages and dependencies.
This will also deploy our application to the local network. Now, I'll run the project. Great, I can now access this local starter project on localhost 3000. Voila, here's our application. So now that we have our local application running, let's get started. First, on the home page, you'll see this NFT time capsules. So once we verify the NFT, we'll actually see the NFT listed on this homepage. But first, we're not going to need to sign in using Internet Identity in order to verify our Ethereum NFTs. Internet Identity allows users to log in to internet computer dApps using common authentication frameworks, such as your fingerprint or face ID. So now let's create an internet identity to sign into this application. Prove that I'm not a robot. And great, now I have saved my internet identity. So now I am signed in. Now we are sent to the verify page, which shows us the internet computer principle, which is the identifier of the signed in internet identity. And the Ethereum address that is currently tied to the MetaMask installed. As a prerequisite to this demo, you're going to need to have MetaMask as well as an NFT in that wallet address. In this case, I'm actually using a completely new MetaMask account, and I've topped it up with Sephoria ETH using the Alchemy Sephoria ETH faucet. And now I'm going to use the MetaMask E2E dApp that was suggested in the repository for me to get a Sephoria NFT. So now I'm going to go back to the IC-Eve-Starter repository and go to the prepare a testnet wallet section. And I am going to navigate to the E2E test app. Yeah, and under the NFT section, what I can do is I can deploy an NFT contract. I'll confirm this transaction. And now I can make one NFT. And I'll confirm that transaction. And it looks like now I should have an NFT in my wallet. So then here. So I clicked on watch NFT to add the NFT to my wallet. So under NFTs, I should be able to see this NFT in my wallet. And in the three dots next to the NFT name up top, Click on it and click on view on OpenSea. This is a link that you will need to enter in the starter app in order to verify the NFT. So let's copy and paste this. And let's go back to our locally deployed app. So first, let's verify our wallet. Here, what it's doing is it's requesting a signature and it's verifying that we actually own this wallet. So I'll sign. And now I will paste this URL in here. And so this green indicator here shows that I do own this NFT. And now let's, let's take a look at our homepage. Our homepage, we see here that 
we have verified that we've owned this NFT. What will happen you know, if we try to verify an NFT that we don't own? So let's go to OpenSea and find an NFT that we don't own. So now let's go to the OpenSea site and just find an NFT that we don't own. So I'll choose an NFT from this collection. I'll grab this link here and go back to the starter app. And let's replace this link with the newly copied link and press enter. And then see, I get an X mark saying that I don't actually own this NFT. In addition, when I go back to the homepage, that NFT that I tried to verify that I didn't own is not listed on the NFT time capsules. So now let's take a look into the code and what's happening behind the scenes. So within our SRC folder, this is where all the front end components are included. So let's say for example, under components, utils, wallet area, this is the component that shows the wallet and NFT verification section. Under the verify NFT function, this is what checks for the NFT metadata and then utilizes the back end to verify if the connected wallet is the owner of the NFT. So in this case, the front end is asking Alchemy to determine which token type and call is appropriate based on the contract address and then sends information about the contract, the network, and the token type and token ID and owner to the back end to verify if it's the same owner that is connected to the app application. Under canisters back end, this is where all the state is stored. Under history.mo and state.mo, this is where you retrieve the event history and query for NFTs whose ownership has been previously verified within this canister. Within core.mo, we define our fundamental functions that power the application. For instance, the connect ETH wallet function verifies MetaMask signatures. The is NFT owned function helps determine whether the connected wallet actually owns the NFT. In both of these functions, you'll see that we interact with the IC ETH canister smart contracts where we leverage the Ether's core Rust library to connect to the Ethereum blockchain. Again, it is important to note that you can write your ETH integration smart contracts in any other language that can compile to WASM and use their corresponding libraries, such as you can write them in Python and use the Ether's Pi library to connect to the Ethereum blockchain. In the case of the connect ETH wallet function, we are using the verify underscore ECDSA function in the libRS. The verify underscore ECDSA function is where we're actually verifying the signature using the ethers dash core library. In the case of the is NFT's own function, we are using the ERC721 underscore owner underscore of function to check if the user owns NFT if it is an ERC721. In the case it is an ERC1155, we are checking the user's balance of that NFT. Under canisters, under IC underscore ETH, this is where we're going to see the Ethereum integration. Typically, under ETH underscore RPC dash RS, this is where we call like all the RPC and function calls. Under lib dot RS, this is where all the functions that find the owner of the ERC721 NFT or the balance in the ERC1155 NFT that user owns of the wallet. As a recap, we gave an overview of the internet computer and the value it provides to Ethereum projects. We verified NFT ownership. 
as well as retrieved event history. We review the canister and front end application architecture. So, what's next for the IC EVE Starter project? Here are a couple of future contribution ideas. So, what? Maybe we can check the balance of fungible tokens. Or we can mint an ICRC 7 NFT, which is an NFT standard on the ICP, to an ERC 721 holder. We can also query signed assets tied to a wallet address. In this case, the IC acts as a ledger or additional data layer on top of verified NFTs. For example, maybe in the future, we can point verified Ethereum NFTs to a human readable URL. Or we can also allow users to verify their Ethereum NFTs as a way to kind of redeem their NFTs while also continuing to own their NFTs. If you have another idea, we would love to hear about it. We would love to see you clone and fork the starter project and start building your own application. Check out the link to the full repository in the description. To learn more about the internet computer, go to our website, which is also listed in the description. Thank you so much again. I'm looking forward to seeing what you built.